the Sith Patriarch's Sutra, the Sith Patriarch's Dharma Jewel Platform Sutra, Chapter One: Action and Intention. Commentary. In this first chapter of the Sutra, the Sith Patriarch gives his disciples a biographical sketch of himself. Action refers to the Sith Patriarch's activities, and intention is that upon which he based his cultivation. Action and intention refers to the source where it all began. Sutra. At one time, the Great Master arrived at Paolin, Magistrate Wei Chu of Shaochou, and other local officials climbed the mountain and invited the Master to come into the city, to the lecture hall of the Ta Fan Temple to speak the Dharma to the assembly. When the Master had taken his seat, the magistrate and Over thirty other officials, more than thirty Confucian scholars, and more than one thousand bishops, bishonis, Taoists, and lay people all made obeisance at the same time, wishing to hear the essentials of Dharma. Commentary: For every sutra, six requirements must be met, commonly explained in the opening sentences. They are faith, hearing, time, host, place, and assembly. Only when these six are fulfilled, is the orthodox dharma being、uh, spoken. To conduct a sutra session, there must be an assembly, magistrate way through, and the gathering of disciples and followers fulfills this requirement. Then there must be a place to speak the dharma. Pali Mountain fulfills this requirement. A dharma master who thoroughly understands the dharma must be. Present as host. Here it is the great master, the sixth patriarch. At one time, suffices for the time requirement, and that all made obeisance at the same time fulfills the faith requirement. They came wishing to hear the essentials of dharma, and that fulfills the requirements of hearing. Wei Chu and the officials climbed Pali Mountain, which is about ten miles. From Shaochou, where Ta Fan Temple, now called Ta Chien Temple, is located, I lived there for a while. This is where the Sikh patriarch spoke the Dharma Jewel Platform Sutra. Sutra, the Great Master said to the assembly, "Good knowing advisers, the self nature of Bodhi is originally clear and pure. Simply use that mind, and you will straight away." Accomplish Buddhahood, good knowing advisers. Listen while I tell you about the actions and intentions by which Huai Neng obtained the Dharma. Commentary: The Great Master spoke to the assembly. You are people with good roots and much wisdom. The self nature of Bodhi is one's own originally enlightened, clear and pure nature. It cannot be produced or destroyed. Defied or purified, increased or decreased. Use this mind. Don't use your false thinking mind. Using his own name in the form of Dai, the Sikh patriarch calls himself Huai Neng, saying, "Now I will tell you how Huai Neng obtained the Dharma." Listen. Sutra Huai Neng's stern father was originally from Fan Yang. He was banished to Xinchou in Lingnan, where he became a commoner. Unfortunately, his father soon died, and his aging mother was left alone. They moved to Nanhai, and poor, in and in bitter straits, Kui Neng sold wood in the marketplace. Commentary from his native district of Fanyang, Kui Neng's father was sent to Lingnan. Because the father is more apt to discipline the children, he is respectfully called stern. The mother ordinarily offers loving kindness to her children, and so she is spoken of as compassionate. Hui kind means that he was kind and compassionate, bestowing dharma upon living beings. Neng able. Means that he was able to do the Buddha's work. The sixth patriarch's family name was Lu. 
Huinan's father was banished to Lingnan, a frontier region during the Tang Dynasty inhabited by government exiles. The sixth patriarch's father, an official, may have been convicted of an offense and thus banished to Lingnan. Huinan had an unfortunate and unlucky life. His father died when the master was between the ages of three and five years leaving him alone with his widowed mother. He and his mother moved to Nan Hai, where they endured the hardships of poverty. How did they survive? Master Hui Neng hiked into the mountains and chopped wood, returned and sold it in the marketplace, using the money to buy rice for his mother and himself. Sutra, once the customer bought firewood, and ordered it delivered to his shop. When the delivery had been made and Hui Neng had received the money, he went outside the gate where he noticed a customer reciting a sutra. One, upon once hearing the words of this sutra, one should produce that thought which is nowhere supported. Hui Neng's mind immediately opened to enlightenment. Commentary because the Sikh Patriarch's family was poor, he received little formal schooling and could not read. At that time, in China, one needed money to go to school, but in spite of his illiteracy, the Sikh Patriarch's disposition was extremely sharp. And as soon as he heard the line of the Sutra which says that one should have a true mind which is nowhere attached, he immediately became enlightened. He understood that what he had never understood before. Many will hear the sentence, one should produce that thought which is nowhere supported. Are there any who will open to enlightenment? Someone exclaims, why I have? I ask you, what is the enlightenment you have opened? What is the enlightenment unopened? Ask yourself. Sutra. Thereupon he asked the customer of uh, what sutra he was reciting. The customer replied, the diamond sutra. Then again he asked, where do you come from and why do you recite this sutra? The customer said, I come from Tung Chen Monastery in Chichou, Huangmei Province. There the fifth patriarch the great master Hong Chen dwells, teaching over 1,000 disciples. I went there to make obeisance and heard and received this sutra. Commentary The great master, the fifth patriarch, lived in Tung Chen Monastery with more than a thousand disciples whom he taught and transformed. At that time, in China, the study of the Dharma was so fervently pursued that it was not unusual to have a thousand people on one mountain studying the Buddha drama together. Where in America are there a thousand Buddhist disciples studying the drama together? Such a large country, yet there is no such place. It is possible, however, that later there will be more than 10,000 people studying the Buddha drama, but this is not assured. We will have to watch my disciples and see how hard they work. Most Americans are intelligent, but there are some whose intelligence surpasses itself. Every day from morning to night, they are caught up in taking confusing drugs. By taking these drugs, they may attain small and different states of consciousness which they cannot obtain without drugs. These people try drugs again and again until one day they see that it is useless. They think, I've been taking drugs for such a long time now, and I still have not become enlightened. When they realize this, they may turn toward the truth. I teach you the Buddha Dharma, so in the future you can speak the Dharma to teach and transform living beings. Do not be careless, but work well and without confusion, and then many will come to study. You who are now studying the Sikh Vajra Sutra, must know the origin of your learning. When people ask, where did you study the Buddha Dharma? You can reply, 
We studied at the Buddhist lecture hall of the Sino-American Buddhist Association. This is just what is meant by this passage of text. Sutra, the great master constantly exhorts the Sangha and laity lay, lay, lay only to uphold the Diamond Sutra. Then they may see their own nature and straight away achieve Buddhahood. Khoi Neng heard this and decided to go and seek the drama, but he recalled that his mother had no support. From past lives, there were comic conditions which led another man to give Khoi Neng a pound of silver so that he could provide clothing and food for his aging mother. The man instructed him further to go to Huang Mei to call upon and bow to the fifth patriarch. Commentary You should be clear that the great master referred to here is the fifth patriarch, not the sixth patriarch. When Kui Neng heard that there was a place where over 1,000 people were studying the Buddha Dharma together, he became very excited. What I am to do? I really want to study there, he exclaimed to the customer. I heard you recite the drama, the Diamond Sutra, and I understood the principles. I want to go seek the Buddha drama, but I have an aging mother who has no one to care for her. What can I do? Since Bodhisattvas do not seek them, the Sikh Pachyak did not say which great Bodhisattva helped him at this time. The Sutra simply says that because of former karmic conditions, a customer gave Kui Nong a pound of silver. This was certainly a valuable offering. The yield of a day's work chopping fine wood was worth only a few copper pennies in the marketplace, so even if Kui Nong had sold all the wood gathered in a thousand days, its value would not have equaled the gift of silver. The silver provided for his mother's food and lodging. Maybe the man said, you are poor and yet you want to study the Buddha drama. Here I will help you a bit and gave him an offering that he might go and seek drama. The merit and virtue of this offering was great and in the future this man will certainly be a flesh body bodhisattva. Now, perhaps one of us is doing this kind of work. Think to yourself, have I done this kind of meritorious deed? You don't remember. It doesn't matter. There's no need to have phones thinking about it. The man urged him on, saying, You have such great faith that as soon as you heard this sutra, you opened to enlightenment and understood the principle. Hurry, go right away to see the great master at Huang Mei. It will surely be worth your while. Do not delay. Go at once. Sutra After Hui Neng had made arrangements for his mother's welfare, he took his leave. In less than 30 days, he arrived at Huang Mei and made obeisance to the fifth patriarch, who asked him, Where are you from? What do you seek? Hui Neng replied, Your disciple is a commoner from Xin Chou in Lingnan and comes from afar to bow to the master seeking only to be a Buddha and nothing else. The patriarch said, You are from Ling Nan and are therefore a barbarian. So how can you become a Buddha? Kui Neng said, Although there are people from the north and people from the south, there is ultimately no north or south in the Buddha nature. The body of the barbarian and that of the high master are not the same, but what distinction is there in the Buddha nature? The fifth patriarch wished to continue the conversation, but seeing his disciples gathering on all sides, he ordered his visitor to follow the group off to work. Hui Neng said, Hui Neng informs the high master that these disciples might constantly produce his wisdom and is not separate from the self nature. That itself is the field of blessing. It has not yet been decided that what work the High Master will instruct me to do. The fifth patriarch said, Barbarian, your faculties are too sharp. Do not speak further, but go to the back 
courtyard. Courtyard. Huayna withdrew to the back courtyard, where a cultivator ordered him to split firewood and thresh rice. More than eight months had passed when the Bajia one day suddenly saw Huayna and said, "I think these views of yours can be of use, but fear that evil people may harm you. For that reason, I have not spoken with you. Did you understand the situation?" Huayna replied. Your disciple knew the master's intention and has stayed out of the front hall so that others might not notice him. Commentary: As soon as the sixth patriarch made、uh, arrangements for his mother's welfare, he left. Some thirty days later, he arrived at the east side of Shuang Fei Mountain, a Tung Chuan monastery. During his journey, he had had no phone calls, and so he was unaware of how much time had passed before he arrived at Huang Mei. The master was twenty-two years old at the time. When the great master asked from where he had come, Kui Neng told him that he was from the south, from Xinchou. I don't want anything at all, he said. I only want to be a Buddha. All the rest is irrelevant. The fifth patriarch said, "You are a southerner.、Uh, you are the southerner, and southerners are all barbarians. The word barbarians is in Chinese, khe liao. Khe is dog-like animal with an extremely short snout. Liao refers to the coarse people of the borderlands. Basically." This means that those who cannot understand the principles of being human belong to the category of animals. And how can you become a Buddha? Asked the fifth patriarch. The sixth patriarch answered him promptly. Although people are from the north and from the south, he said, the Buddha nature is one and is everywhere the same. The fifth patriarch's disciples were gathered all around, so he said no more. He simply told the sixth patriarch, "Good, you have come. Now go to work with the others. Hurry off." Kui Neng said his own mind always produced wisdom. This wisdom is produced from one's own self nature, and the fields of blessings are not separate from it. I do not yet know what the master wants me to do," he said. The patriarch heard Kui Neng talking this way and said. This barbarian has sharp roots. He cautioned cautioned Huai Neng to be more discreet and not talk so much. Speak no more, he said. Go to the back courtyard. In the back courtyard, a cultivator told Huai Neng what to do. When people first come to a place, they always bullied. They are always bullied. This disciple who had not yet left home said to Huai Neng. You every day you must cut wood, build a fire, and cook the food. Here's an egg, an eggs, and be sure to cut the cutling too. Besides that, every day you must thresh the rice. Over eight months later, the bajak saw Wei Nan walking on the threshing threshing ground and said to him, "I think that your wisdom and opinions can be used." But fearing jealous people might harm you, I have not spoken with you too much. Did you know that? Huai Neng said. I understand. I have not dared go into the front door of my home to speak with the master, lest others notice my actions or the master's compassion toward me. Sutra. One day, the patriarch summoned his disciples together and said, "I have something to say to you." For people in the world, the matter of birth and death is a great one. All day long, you seek fields of blessings only. You do not try to get out of the bitter sea of birth and death. If you are confused about your self nature, how can blessings save you? Commentary: The fifth patriarch said, regardless of whether you are extremely rich or bitterly poor, you cannot avoid birth and death. Consequently, you should know. How you were born? If this question of birth and death is not resolved, life is dim and confused, and you are confused with coming and going. You do nothing but seek merit, 
among the gods and among humans, you do not know how to seek wisdom. Thus you swore, and drift in the suffering sea of birth and death. It is said that one who cultivates wisdom and does not cultivate merit is like a heart with an empty begging bowl. He is very wise, but no one makes offerings to him. But if one cultivates merit and neglects wisdom, he is just like a big elephant wearing a pearl necklace beneath the adornments of blessing. He is stupid and will never solve the problem of birth and death. Sutra, each of you go back and look into your own wisdom and use the primal nature of your own original mind to compose a verse, submit it to me so that I may look at it. If you understand the great meaning, the rope and drama will be passed on to you and you will become the sixth patriarch. Hurry off, do not delay. Thinking and considering is of no use in this matter. When seeing your own nature, it is necessary to see it at the very moment of speaking. One who does that perceives as does one who wields, wields a sword in the height of battle. Commentary verse here is the Sanskrit word gather. A gather is composed of lines of uniform length, though the length may vary from gather to gather. Go quickly, said the fifth patriarch. Go as if a fire were about to overtake you. Do not dawdle and procrastinate, saying, Oh, I cannot do it today. I will do it tomorrow instead. And then the next day, saying, Not today either, perhaps tomorrow. Do not keep putting it off and do not try to think about it. It is useless to use your discriminating mind. If you have deep prana wisdom, you understand the moment you hear the word spoken. Just as one grabs a weapon and confronts the oncoming enemy, so do you perceive you can see the nature in the same immediate way.